Welcome to lesson 15. In this episode, I want to show you how to change uh, 3D shapes, in this case, uh, the tabletop here, and the difference between press pull and extrude. I usually start with a small sketch and a 2D sketch. Let's change the top view. Start with a rectangle here. 900 by 600 and what we can do now is we can use fillet to make our rounded corners we want to change this radius to a 200 millimeter radius then we're going to Draw a couple of center lines. And we have the side panels 460 apart. So I'll make an offset of 230. It gives us the outline. Of that I basically draw the footprint for our base. Then the whole thing is uh, 400 wide, an offset of 200. And it's all out of 32 millimeter thick board. So we offset this at uh, 32. So this is it's here. Can already start deleting some of the lines. Makes it a bit easier. Now we just need to draw the thickness of the center board. We offset it 16 each side. And now we trim. Trim this. And we can use fillet with a radius zero to trim the other corners. Radius zero. the center line. So that's basically our small little 2D sketch and we can draw our 3D drawing out of that. It's a good idea to just do a copy of it and start your 3D extrusions from copy. So we start with box shapes here. They are our side pieces and they're going to be 400.50 high. So we switch over to another layer. Quickly move this to that layer. Then we draw the center panel. Same height. And for that one, we do a simple mirror. And now we can do an extrusion of our tabletop. We use the extrude command to that. Since this is already a, a polyline, it's important that it's a polyline, otherwise it uh, just will uh, extrude faces and not a whole 3D solid shape. So that's our 32 in height. And now we just need to lift it up. We use the move command. We move it up in the set level, 450. So here is our uh, 3D shape table now. Uh, next step would be 
for the analyze a part properties on it. We select them in the order that we want to assign the pro properties. So our first one is our side panel. Uh, we possibly copy this for the next panel, for the next object. Uh, material, we use 32 millimeter external. External one. Now we want to nest it. And we need to select an assembly. We actually have to do a new one. Call it table. And we want to dowel those things together. And we set next for those properties here. And this one's the side panels. Uh, once they get imported in analyzer the manufacturing, they get uh, turned around so the long side will be horizontal. So therefore the edges will be top and bottom. Since they get turned and rotated by 90 degrees. We save this and this is our next panel, exactly the same properties. We save that again. Now our center panel. Our center panel has the same thing. It doesn't have any edges, we can delete them. And uh, it's the same assembly. We save it and this is our tabletop. And the edges will be all the way around, so we put an A in there. So now it's basically ready to go into production, so we put that into Analyze and Manufacturing. And there we go. This is our tabletop be rounded corners, etched around all the way. Same uh, the side panels, they're etched on the 450 side, and dowels are drilled everywhere. So what's happening now is we sent this drawing to the customer and they don't like the nine uh, they don't like the two hundred millimeter radius corners, they want one hundred millimeter corners. So now this is relatively easy to change. Go to the top view. So what we do is we still have this line here. So we're going to change this radiuses to the new 100 millimeter radius. We use the fillet command for that again. The radius change to 100. All we need to do is basically copy this to the bottom edge of our tabletop. Go in top view again. And now since this has been extruded, we click at the 3D shape. This gives us the outline corners of the polyline. So what we can do is we can move them to the new starting point of our corners and we just move the the center point there as well So now the shape of our tabletop has changed. The part properties are still there, and all we need to do is uh, importing it to analyze the manufacturing. So 
as you can see now, it's got 100 millimeter radius corners. Now I quickly want to show you the difference between extrude and press spool. If you would have used press spool, we wouldn't have been able to change the shape. Uh, I can quickly demonstrate this here. make a couple of copies of our tabletop outline. Depends depends how you draw on this. Um, it could be that you've drawn it with lines. It's quickly exploded. If this would have been drawn with lines, you wouldn't be able to do uh, an extrusion here. So we use extrusion for that. And it'll simply extrude you uh, a mesh of the edges, and that's not uh, not a true 3D shape. But Prespo could transfer this into a 3D shape if you had a lot of lines drawn, and uh, you don't want to make a polyline out of it. You don't need to. You can use Prespo for that, but be aware you won't be able to change the shape afterwards. So I'll quickly do that. 32. Now this one we extrude with the extrude command. And now the difference is when you click at those grips here, you cannot change and you simply move the whole part around. So this is pretty much locked in now in the shape. All you can change with press pool is the height, extrusion height of it. Or if you're very fancy, you can put tapers on it. That's about as far as the press pool objects go. But here you have the full flexibility. So you can, you can change the shape within limits, obviously. and still remains a true 3D shape. Well, that's basically all I want to show you in today's episode. Thank you for watching.